Hi, thanks for watching this video. This is from MathPowerline.com, my YouTube channel, Math Class with Terry V. This is at the end of a video series about using trigonometric identities. And I've gone through the sequence here of the basics, what an identity is, um, a reciprocal identity, tangent identities, and Pythagorean identities. Rewriting expressions and solving equations are a couple of the uh, reasons why you would need to know and use these trig identities. We've done some problem sets that you've given a try, and now it's time for a self-quiz. So I have three questions for you to try. Grab a piece of paper and see if you can figure them out. Now I want to just recap exactly what we've been talking about here, and these are the reciprocal identities where the six trigonometric functions of sine, cosine, and tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent can be written as reciprocals of each other as you can see here. And I developed that in an earlier video so if uh, this looks kind of foreign to you you should go and look at the basics video of this video series. Uh, the tangent is sine over cosine, the cotangent is cosine over sine and those are just definitions of what a tangent is. We also talked about these identities which are the Pythagorean identities all based on a unit circle where the hypotenuse is 1 and so this vertical leg here is sine and the horizontal leg there is cosine. Because it's a right triangle we can use Pythagorean theorem to write these identities here. These two with the tangent secant or the cotangent cosecant are all related to the original here which is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So to solve these uh, quiz questions we're going to be coming back to these pages in a moment. Alright here we go. As with all of my uh, self quizzes um, in these videos I want you to um, write these down on a piece of paper. Pause the video though because I'll wait a few seconds and then I'll uh, show you how to work them out but see if you can follow the directions here. Number one and number two it says to rewrite in terms of one trig function and then simplify as much as possible. Alright, pause the video and good luck. Alright, number one, um, let's look for an opportunity to use a trig identity and I notice that it says sine squared x. Let's take a look at our trig identity sheet. I notice that I have sine squared theta, which is about the same thing, and we can replace that with 1 minus cosine squared x in the case of our problem. So let's go ahead and throw that in there. So we'll replace sine squared x as 1 minus cosine squared x, and copy down the rest, and let's see what happens. So I noticed that this is a positive one and this is a negative one. So I can basically make those disappear. So I have negative cosine squared x minus cosine x. Let's add cosine x to both sides. So I have this so far and I should be able to divide out a common factor which is going to be cosine x. So underneath there and underneath here. Again, the idea is to simplify. Now, since it's an equation, I actually am going to take it further and solve for x. Negative cosine x equals 1. Well, let's get rid of the um, negative sign there by actually dividing or multiplying both sides by a negative 1. And so now we're looking at cosine of an angle x equals negative 1. All right, we need to figure out where on the unit circle is the cosine value negative 1. Reviewing our unit circle here, the cosine value is the x value, whether we're going this way or this way. As we open up the angle, we have this as the angle that gives us the cosine value of a negative 1. So our first answer, x equals 180 degrees or pi radians. Alright, so 
we use the trig identity to in fact solve this equation. Now let's see what you did on number two. We want to take either the cosine function or the sine function and write it so that we all have the same trig function throughout. Can you do it? All right, we're going to change cosine squared x into 1 minus sine squared x. That's the Pythagorean identity. Hopefully you'll know that by now. So that is where we're going to substitute that. Now this is a distributive property idea here, so let's go ahead and multiply that out. We're going to cancel this positive 2 with a negative 2 right there. In my next step, I notice that I can divide each side by sine x. So let's do that right here. And it'll get even simpler, and then we'll be able to solve this equation. So negative sine x over sine x is going to give us a negative 1. So let's rewrite what we have. Negative 2 sine x equals 1. Well, let's get the sine x by itself. So we're going to divide each side by negative 2 just get all of our integers taken care of here and let's see what we have. So now those negative twos cancel each other and sine x equals positive one half. Alright, well on the unit circle what angle gives us a sine value of positive one half? Let's go back to the unit circle. So on the unit circle, remember that the sine value is the second value. That's the y coordinate. So that would be here and here. Let's find it. Where is my 1 half? Right there. All right, so what angles gave those to us? Well, it looks like 150 degrees, 5 pi over 6, and 30 degrees, pi over 6. All right, so we have two possible answers. 30 degrees, 150 degrees, or pi over 6 radians. Whoops, slipped off the edge there. And 5 pi over 6 radians. All right, four possible answers there. All right, we got one more to try. All right, final question. Secant to the fourth power x minus tangent to the fourth power x. We're going to factor it and simplify, but look for a chance to substitute using a trig identity. All right, the secret with these kinds of problems are um, that we don't have a trig identity with the fourth powers here, but you need to figure out what the structure is and see if we can see a pattern. So this is a function to the fourth power minus another function to the fourth power. You know what, let's think of it as, let's say x to the fourth minus y to the fourth. All right, it says that we're supposed to try to factor this. So how would we factor that kind of pattern? Well, it's a difference of two perfect squares because we would have x squared minus y squared and x squared plus y squared. Again, I'm just sort of substituting in to kind of look at the structure of this. So it's the difference of perfect squares. And if I can figure that out, let's translate that here. So secant to the fourth x, let's go, it's going to give us two binomials. All right, and it's a plus minus pattern. So one group is a negative, the other group is a positive. And in this first group, I'm going to have secant squared x tangent squared x. Here it's going to be the same thing but a plus sign in between. So secant squared x plus tangent squared x. Didn't really give myself enough room there, did I? Alright, well, notice that secant squared x minus tangent squared x or even the plus version, I believe there's a trig identity for that. Let's look at our table. Uh, there it is. Secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta is just another name for 1 based on that Pythagorean identity. All right, let's do that substitution. So this is going to be 1 and 
it comes from that expression right there. So 1 times that is, of course, secant squared x plus tangent squared x. Well, let's do some substituting. And again, the idea most of the time is try to get it in terms of one trig function, not multiple ones. Well, you know what? Let's rename secant squared x as what we find in the Pythagorean identity. Let's take another look. There it is. Secant squared x, in this case theta, can be rewritten as tangent squared theta plus 1. Let's do that. Tangent squared theta, sorry, tangent squared x, plus 1, and tangent squared x is also here. Finally, putting together what we have, we have two tangent squared x's, don't we? So, two tangent squared x plus 1. Don't forget the 1 there. So, from this entire thing with larger exponents, we shrink it down and do two trig identity substitutions and come up with this expression. Now again, all we're doing is simplifying and writing it in terms of one trig function. We're not solving an equation. All right, there we go. Thanks for working on those three practice problems and thanks for watching all the videos in this series. Take care.